Hi Booktube and welcome to a new video. This is a tag video. I was tagged by Sean the Boat Book Maniac, whose original tag this was. He tagged me about 40 minutes ago. So here we go. This is the, the two books with one stone tag. And it's a tag that revolves around the theme of do's. Okay, prompt one. The second last book you read, uh, well I had to consult um, Goodreads for that, which is pathetic. I couldn't even remember the book that I finished, you know, last week basically. Uh, but anyway, it is Optic Nerve by Maria Gainzer, an Argentinian author. Uh, this is her debut novel, um, and I review it. Uh, I'll put the link to my video. I gave it four stars. It was an enjoyable read. Prompt two. The second book from the top of your TBR. Well, I'm not sure. It's one of two because I don't, you know, just because whatever is in my TBR, it can change on a whim. So it was probably going to be The Lost Children Archive by Valeria Luiselli, an author I read before and liked. I think this is pretty much the only book on the women's uh, long women's prize long list, um, other than Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss, which I've read. This is going to be the only other one of those. And I read Freshwater as well. So I would have read, when I read this, I would have read three out of the long list of however many is on it. Is it 13 or 16? Um, the others didn't really appeal to me. I mean, two of them were retelling of myths. No, thank you. Another one is, is you know, sounds very Sally Rooney-esque. No, thank you. Um, but, and I do kind of want to read this before the shortlist is announced, um, but I'm not sure it's quite a chunker. The reason I'm not sure is because I'm currently reading uh, a book on the Man International Booker Prize, which is called The Shape of the Ruins by... Uh, uh, a Colombian author called Jean Vasquez, something Vasquez, and in it he um, talks about this book, uh, W. G. Sebald, The Emigrants, and uh, he's you know really sort of piqued my curiosity. So I think I might actually read this one before I read this one. So I'm going to say The Emigrants, but that may change. Um, prop three, two two star reads from this year. Um, well. Um, the, the Ghost Wall that I mentioned by Sarah Moss and The Wonder Boys by Michael Chabon. Now, I'd read The Yiddish, Policeman's Bo uh, the Yiddish Policeman's Union by Michael Chabon a few years ago. I thought it was OK, uh, but I know Chabon is really highly thought of, mainly for Cavalier and Clay. And I saw... I think it was The Book Chemist. No, not The Book Chemist. Yeah, maybe it was The Book Chemist talking about this. He's a big Chabon fan and he likes a lot of authors that I like, like Jonathan Leatham people like that. So I thought I'll give it a go and um, again I'll post the link to my review of it. It, was, it left me completely cold. Now onto this Farago, Ghost Wall, Sarah Moss. So I'll leave the link to my two-star review of this book which drove me absolutely mad when I found out not only is it on the women's uh, prize long list but it's you know tips that it could well win. And I seem to be a lone voice in booktube that I just thought this book was absolute dreck. Uh, and if it does win, I'm afraid I'm going to have to give up on the Women's Prize because even though there are always good books on the long list, the lot, if this wins, it'll be this, Camilla Shamsi's Home Fire, no, Homeland, Home, no, Home Fire, and Naomi Alderman's The Power. All three books, and I can say this confidently now, have appeared in my worst reads for their respective years. Naomi Alderman's The Power was my worst read in 2017. Camilla Shamsi was not my direst read, but it was in the, the, my worst five books of the year. And this, I'm almost certain, is going to be in my worst. So I think that's telling me something. Anyway. Uh, oh, I ought to say that, as you know, most of my books are out in the shed, although I'm actually increasingly moving them in because they're just being sort of eaten away by mould. It's very distressing. Um, so I went to the shed to get the books for this tag and uh, I found both of these in my unhaul pile. Also says it all. Um, OK, um, two, prop four, two great books by the same author. Well, this is a tough one, but I decided to go for Philip Roth, uh, a man who's written over 30 books and I can't claim to have read even half of them. And he's, to me, what I have read, which is six or seven, they're quite patchy. Some are good, some are not so good. But these two are outstanding. That uh, American Pastoral made it into my top ten books tag uh, 
as uh, is being run by Jason uh, over at Old Chapters, Old Blues Chapter and Verse. And I hadn't read this at the time I did that video. Um, in a very different way, you know, this is a serious-minded work, a sort of sociological study, really, of uh, the 60s in America. This is just hilarious. And it, to me, it shows Ross' versatility. So, uh, American Pastoral and The Great American Novel. Um, I... I might post the link to that if I remember uh, to my review of it last year. Um, prompt five: two bales or two books you'd wished you bailed or two books you hated. Well, I've done the Sarah Moss, so let's leave her alone, shall we? I don't really bail. Uh, what I do do is I sort of put a book aside and sort of say, "Oh, I'll come back to this." Um, so, but one book I genuinely did bail on was this, Ancient History, a paraphrase by Joseph McElroy, which I tried to read, I think, last year, or maybe right at the end of 2017, as I started reading more sort of works from sort of 60s and 70s American postmodernists. I'm not sure how far I got into this book, but it was, it was tedious in the extreme, and I could see that it wasn't going to change. It was just also a description of relationships between people, not through what they said or thought or how they related to each other, but their physical proximity in space, and whether it was sort of distant or whatever. Now, uh, Rob Grier does that much better, so I, I genuinely bailed on this book. It's probably the last book I, I actually bailed on. And, uh, you know, I couldn't find another book that I bailed. I'd done a whole video about books that I've put aside, you know, should I admit that I've bailed or not. But anyway, I did go to the I did reach the end of this, Unlondon by China Melville, and hated it. It's a book for four-year-olds. I can't say any more than that. Um, prompt six. Two favourite reads so far this year. Well, it's been a funny year because there's been one outstanding read, which is not a new book. And then there have been a few four, five star reads, but you know, they've all none of them have blown me away. They've been really good, solid, enjoyable reads that I could immerse myself in. Whereas this time last year, I'd read books that have blown me away. So I'm not, I do have a lot of books by authors that I like that their new books are coming out later in the year. So it's well back. There's Jenny, not Jenny, there's, um, yeah, Jenny Ophill's got a new book. The Jonathan Lethe book, something called The Forensic detective or something like that is out has been out for a while but it's so expensive i have to wait for it to come in in paperback so there'll be that and there are other books i've 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 um made a note to myself to keep an eye out for which i can't remember now um so you know the year might pick up and i've got to say i hope it does um but my absolute blown away book was clarice lispector the passion according to gh which is an absolute five star and i buddy read this with Celia. And I'll post the link to my review of it. And it, it blew me away. So this is the third Lispector book I've read. And it had such an effect on me that I, you know, I've committed that I want to read everything by her. So in a way, that, that question about um, two great books by the same author, I very easily could have done Lispector. And the other is George Sanders' Lincoln in the Bardo, which is a really good five-star read. And I really enjoyed it. But once it, it sort of set its its parameters and its conceits out and even though he did cleverly move it on either in terms of addressing new themes or or whatever i did feel it, that the conceit itself didn't really move on didn't really take us anywhere new but it was still a highly you know it was five stars it was, it was a very good read um prompt seven two new favorite booktubers well i haven't discovered new booktubers i've followed booktubers recently who you know everyone else has, has heard of and I for some reason I hadn't I hadn't come across so I haven't actually followed any new startup uh, booktubers there are a couple of booktubers I really hope will come back because they seem to have stopped producing videos one is um, siblings chat books which is a brother and sister team in uh, York uh, they were great and very charming uh, with their videos and the other is uh, the Joyce and book nerd um, I do hope they come back and, and produce more videos um, so I can't really recommend it, but it's, you know, yesterday I saw a video uh, from Beth Chat's Books, who after a hiatus has come back, which is great. I'm really pleased that she's back. So I'm going to say go and uh, follow Beth Chat's Books, although technically she's not a new book to her, it's not even new to me. Um, eight, a book you've read twice. Well, I don't read books twice, but this year uh, I was doing a podcast on three of my favourite books, so I reread two of them, one of which was Cobra Lingus by Jeff Noon. And I will post the link in the show notes as to my uh, hour-long podcast where I talk about this. 
uh, David Peace's The Damned United, and David Marks's This Is Not a Novel. Uh, prop nine, two fabulous quotes from books you've read recently. Okay, um, <laughs> where are the books? I'm an idiot, I can't find... Hmm. I am genuinely an idiot. Bear with me. Ah, it's behind me. Okay. So the first one is from a book I'm currently reading. I haven't finished it yet. It's another one on the uh, Man Booker International Prize, which is called Years by Annie Erno, a French writer. And she's got this quote, Existence is to drink oneself without thirst, which I think is a brilliant sort of philosophical existentialist statement on, on what life is. To drink oneself, i.e. to derive pleasure uh, from existence and life, uh, but to drink oneself, interestingly, so it is about ego, uh, and uh, without thirst, so not to do it sort of compulsively or, you know, because you have to, but to to just savour, to savour experience. So I thought that was a great quote. So much so, I've nicked it for my current uh, work in progress. Uh, I am citing her, by the way. The other is from Jarrett Kobeck's Only Americans Burn in Hell, greatest current living social satirist uh, novel writer although you can argue whether it's a novel or not. And he has written, The Harry Potter books were a series of fantasy novels about an English boarding school, wherein the most fantastical thing that happened was the complete absence of buggery and same-sex handjobs. That gives you an idea of how this book is pitched. And ten. Uh, tag the number of booktubers. The total must be divisible by two. OK, well, believe it or not, I don't think I've ever tagged Steve Donoghue. Um, so he's going to be one of them, although I'm not even sure that he watches my videos, so he might not pick this up. And I'm going to twin that with Jason at Old Blue's Chapter and Verse. Um, so that's a pair, two. But I'm also going to um, tag this strip cover Lip Boys, which is technically one booktube channel, but two people. So, uh, Sean the Book Maniac, you can, you can decide if I fall and foul of your rules for this tag. OK, Sean, so thanks very much. So probably about an hour since you've tagged me now, I'm going to um, upload and tag and tail this right back at you. Till next time.